I guess, into an assistant living facility, and uh, the guy's dying, oh. though, and he does have uh, the virus, I guess, and he's a Christian, very fearful, though, so, yeah. Lord, just uh, cover him, and, yes. and, Lord, let him know that you are there for him um, as one pass in, into eternity. You uh, are there. So just pray for him. Um, for my niece, Amber, her daughter, um, I guess fell. Right? So we want to pray for Nick and Amber. And, So we pray for Emma Grace, Lord, just be with her and just mend those little wounds because I know everything came back okay. So um, just be with her and that family. And then um, also Nick's mother, Donna Polson, uh, tests for her kidneys. And so we want to uh, pray for her. And uh, Andy is going in for uh, precancerous tests, I think, tomorrow. So he's, uh, just be with him and um, just uh, cover him, watch over him and uh, give him comfort, Lord. And Chrissy? Uh, my, my mom and my, and Danny. Yeah. Uh, just cover that whole family, Lord, Chrissy and her family. And, and again, all the families here, uh, we just want to pray for. We also want to pray for our churches, uh, the Greater Grace Churches, those getting ready to open up who have not. And um, Lord, uh, we know that uh, just like everything else, this is a time thing uh, where people get comfortable and um, to come on out, but we are to be in this place and this is where it starts. So Sunday we'll have uh, a message on that. Amen? Amen. Okay, and then John also, uh, just pray for John too. And he was in the hospital, he's out, he was listening Sunday. Uh, but um, he'll he'll be here Sunday too, so we thank you for you know hopefully in Jesus name John chapter eight. Are we ready, Facebook people? You ready? Kind of. Kind of. Um, remember, this is new because we did this from our house, so a little bit different. But um, it will. It's all right. It'll it'll get going, I guess, as we go. So John chapter eight. And again, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, for the word of God, the word that keeps and continues to speak to your people. We do not compromise what is written. Um, we thank you for this opportunity to speak it and um, listen to it and to hear it, to digest it, that it becomes living within us because you are faithful. The living word. Mm. The living word speaks to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So red letter edition, Gospel of John, chapter 8. And we will uh, start uh, where Jesus speaks in verse 7. Little intro on this. This is the woman caught in adultery. And um, they take this woman and they bring her and place her at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, their, and then their comments were, teacher, this woman was caught in the very act. And then it says, and I love this, I think in five or six, it says, now Moses, Moses said that we can stone her according to the law. Matter of fact, the law commanded that she should be stoned. And then, and then they say this, what do you say? And this was all to trap him. They weren't caring, caring about the woman. They didn't, you know, they, they were gonna stone her anyway. Whatever he said, that was their intentions. And, but they wanted to hear what he has to address in the matter. And, and it's something because We've got the law. We've got what it says in the law to do. And we've got somebody who has been caught in that sin. 
But because your teaching is a little different, and remember they even said, you know, he teaches with authority. He teaches with something. To, but what do you say? What do you say, Christ? And, and he didn't acknowledge them. He let it go the first time until they started to bother him a little bit more with the same request. And, you know, and his answer is in verse 7. And he says, he who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And this is, a, this is amazing. He that is without sin, let him first cast the first stone. So if you don't have sin, step up. That's what he's saying. Step on up here. Step on up. You're before God now. It's just you and God. If you don't have sin in your life, come and stand before God and you, you do what everybody else is saying to do. And this, this was to get them to examine and look within themselves. You know, because... This is what Jesus is teaching here. Look within yourself. And, you know, check your own heart. And if you can say that you've never sinned, you know, completely contrary to what the law, the law already gave the command to judge based upon an outward action of somebody. And this is what the law does. It exposes sin and then has a course of action as a penalty for that sin, which you know, the wages of, of that sin is, uh, is, of course, death. But look deep down into your own heart. Come forward. Look deep into your own heart. And, you know, if you think about it, you know, how do we know the hardness of our own heart? Because men, you know, we're, we're depraved. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 5. Man is, is depraved. And, and there is sin. And the Bible also says that all have sinned. And, and comes so far away from what God requires of them. And here he's addressing. And it took the, the, uh, the oldest, the people that were the oldest, the wisest, the more experienced, those who lived along, they understood. And one by one, you know, they, they walked away. You know, Jesus Christ is not joining in with their accusations because they're accusing her. And the, and the words are coming and the slanders are coming and whatever else was said. But they were accusing her verbally, loud, so everybody would know what was taking place. But Jesus didn't participate. His head was even down. Hmm. He didn't look at her to even cause more shame. Wow. You know, when one's caught in sin, you find everybody staring. Yeah. Knowing like what you did, it's not what Christ did. It's not what he did, you know. Even though she was probably guilty. Even though the law said to stone her, Jesus did not participate. Didn't participate. It just kept his head down. He stood, stooped down. Matter of fact, she was thrown down on the ground and that's where he was at also mm -hmm. he was at the same level as she was yes. right from the beginning and um, stooped down and uh, not embarrassing her not participating in the accusations not throwing shame in her direction like people do you know it's like sometimes when you make a mistake, you ever notice that like some people are happy with that? You know? I mean, they, they, because, 
you know, they live in sin, and if others do it, they're, they're feeling not as bad about themselves. But the religious leaders, no accusations, no shame, no guilt, no condemnation. You know, and, and he stooped and he wrote. And, you know, many have different opinions of what was written. But really here it doesn't matter because it's not included. But we can go into a couple of things where I see, but um, J. Vernon McGee wrote uh, the, uh, something about this because this is the only place in history where you see Jesus Christ writing anything. Anything. And just think if, if something was written by Christ, you know how much they would worship that paper? You know, maybe, maybe probably not. But, but in just thinking, because, of, but because it's an artifact. Mm -hmm. You know, but it would be something because nothing they have from him. And one of the biggest things that me and my wife get when we go out outreaching, and I just heard it today as I was witnessing to the neighbor next door. She said, the only problem I have is the Bible is written by men. And right away, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, thank God he used, he used men to write this. Mm -hmm. Men from all different walks of life over a period of how many years? And, and, thousands of years, and it all comes to the same point that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. That's the conclusion. So how do we can't even get a group of 10 people to agree on anything. <laughs> let alone, yeah, let alone men all over from all ages looking to Christ and knowing with the same with the same response. Written by man, yes, but inspired by God. Yes. God inspired that. This isn't a free-for-all in their own writing uh, material, even though they had all different writing styles and different languages and, and you know, some in Hebrew and some in Greek and, and whatever. But, um, but to think about that, you know, to think about that writing and, and this time in history, you know. And then... As I was thinking about this more, you think about this. You know, yeah, why, why wasn't something written? Well, look at look what God used here. Number one, written in sand mm. first. Number two, trampled on by men. Wow. Men would trample that same area that Christ wrote. Mm. Trample it. How about this? The wind would blow it away. It's all sand. It's all dust. It's not permanent. But it's where it is. And then water would wash it away. And, and this is like what the world, you know, thinks of Christ. That's what they would like to happen to him. Mm. You know? to be nothing, to not even be recorded. Turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah 17, mm. verse 13. You guys with me on Facebook? Amen, amen. <laughs> Throw some hearts out. Yeah. 17, 13. Jeremiah 17, 13 says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, for all who forsake, you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth. Hmm. So this is where people, a lot of them say, well, he was writing the names of the people 
that came to stone them, stone her. He could have been writing their names one by one. You know, that this is where that comes from. And um, shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. Mm. Remember Jesus said, just come unto me, those who are thirsty. In, in um, John chapter 4, um, um, I think 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give shall never thirst, but that water shall be uh, a river, or shall become a fountain of water springing up within them, you know, and, um, but they won't come to the, the one that can su sustain them, the one that deals with the true need of man and women, the inward need that, um, that many people lack of. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's something, you know, to talk about people who are in great fear right now. But yet when you bring up Christ, oh, I'm not ready for that. Well, what's it going to take, you know? But, um, I, and, and then, yeah, then another thing, she, you know, I'm almost ready. Mm. You're not almost ready. You are or you're not. I mean, it's not you being ready. It's him, you know, when he calls you, you know. So, um, writing in the water. So, do we, you know, do we have the right to judge? Do we have the right to accuse? Do, do we have the right to bring up legal requirements that, um, that do not, that cannot save you, but can only condemn you? That's all the law can do. The law cannot save you. The law cannot give you life. The law cannot spiritually fill you with anything but, but um, requirements and obligations of, of things that I have to keep to make myself feel like I've done good for God. That's all it is. Well, I've done this, this, this. You know, and, and then you start boasting about it. We brag on how good we are. Mm -hmm. Where the Bible says we are nothing without him. Nothing. So um, can we pass judgment? Can we pass uh, you know, condemnation? Can we pass shame? But this is the requirement. In the, earth, in the beginning, when he says, let the sinless come forth and cast the first stone. That's, that, that's what this whole thing's about. You know, let him come forward. So in verse 10 is, is the next one that Jesus speaks. And now Jesus raises himself up a little bit because now he's speaking to the women, the woman who was caught in adultery, and now everybody is left. They have all left at this time. And Jesus has two questions for her. And these are questions of hope. You know, and, and it seems like when the Lord speaks to us, we can find great hope in it. We can find comfort. We can find encouragement. We can be built up. We can be stirred up in our flesh. You know, it does something to the inner man that causes us to talk about Christ to others. Yes. Because what is needed now more than anything in the world is, is a hope of an eternal uh, existence. Mm. Because this world, if you haven't noticed now, is fading away. Mm. Little by little, it's getting more and more crazier out there. The things that they tell us now, where do they come up with this stuff? Where are they getting this stuff? And why are they in charge of how we are to do or act or anything? And that's called the world system. And the Bible talks, talks about it all the way back in Genesis in, in Babylon. It's always been there. It's always been part of the great fall. And it's not going away. And it's, it's good. it wants more control. More and more. But he asked her two questions. Where? And the second question was starts with has. So it's 
Where are your accusers? Number one, where are your accusers? And number two, has no man condemned thee? You know, this is something here to think about. Because men, men accuse. We accuse one another. And you can accuse and you can bring shame and you can bring guilt. You know, I, I'm thinking, you know, uh, you know, some religions were very good at doing that to people. Putting great guilt upon people. You know, and shame and, and even trying to pass judgment. This is what they did to this lady. To be able to take her life. To judge her. And this is what Christ is bringing. Well, you, you don't have sin? You, do you think you're going to pass sin or pass judgment with your sin? Don't you think you're going to be judged for your sin by God? Who are you to have that right to pass judgment and condemnation into an eternal state? Because that's what they're trying to do. You know, and you think about that's how men works. But you ever, you, you notice God, at least during the time of grace and time of the church, is not about condemning. It's not about putting judgment on people. He, God, our God right now is not a, there will be a day where he will judge every person. But Christ was judged upon the cross. So man does not have to be judged as long as we accept Jesus Christ. Judgment was put upon him. So God is not in, you know, God right now is not judging, accusing, or condemning. Amen. God is in restoring. Thank you. God is in, in, in forgiving. God wants to forgive. God wants to restore. God, God doesn't, you know, God wants to deliver. God wants to deliver her. Deliver her. What a different outlook. You know, and, you know, you know, we know what to do, but what do you think? And, and next thing you know, they're gone. That's what he thinks. You're gone. You know, you're out of the picture. So, verse 11, as we wrap this up, and she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn thee. And then go and sin no more. And I love the positioning of that. Yes. You know, he doesn't say, go sin no more. Neither do I condemn me had to come first. Mm. Because now she has something to stand upon. That my sins are forgiven. Mm. That's what no condemnation means. I'm not going to be condemned for my sins because the one that saved me took on that condemnation. Yes. Christ alone the once and for all sacrifice, you know? So it's like um, he's not looking at her according to her sin anymore. He's looking at her according to, I'm going to equip you to live a life. But she was guilty. Mm. But aren't we all? Yeah. You know, we've all have sinned. And it's not that Christ looked the other way. He equipped her to go forward and to go and to live her life and to be restored and to be healed and to be ministered to. And I think of it this way. I think of it this way as we wrap this up. It's like here's a woman that was thrown in front of Christ. The best place to be thrown to. Any other place besides where Christ was, she would have been stoned. Mm. If they would have took her to any other person wow. in Israel, in Jerusalem, she would have been stoned. Because they would have agreed with the law. They would have agreed with religion. Mm. But because of grace, she found herself in front of Christ. Grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
And, and, I, and I picture it this way. So as she's cast before Christ, and Jesus says, neither do I condemn thee, because he already knew he was going to the cross. And because Christ went to the cross, there's no condemnation to us. And now then we have a capacity. Doesn't mean that we're not going to sin, but we have a capacity to sin no more. So it's like the woman, the cross of Jesus Christ, and then Jesus. And, and, and this is what we see. Because we have forgiveness. And we have resurrection on the other side. And, uh, and we have great hope. And we've got good news. Just a little bit before this, she thought she was going to die. She thought she was going to be stoned to death like it was a custom to do. And they had the authority to do it because it was written in their law until Christ came. Mm. So what do you think? You know, what do you say? What do you say when a person comes to you and, and is in sin? What do you say when a person is hurting and struggling and doesn't have no hope? Do, do we have the Bible to stand upon? And this is, this is why we teach. This is why we preach the word of God, to equip the saints for the ministry. Thank you. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for the word of God. We just praise you. And um, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, if you've never, if you don't know that you've been forgiven, if you don't know what Christ has done for you, if you're listening to us online, you don't know which way to turn. You've never heard it this way. You've never had it explained. When Jesus Christ came to die for your sins. And the only thing that you have to do is you don't join a church, you don't join a religion. You accept Christ as your personal Savior. Mm. Jesus said to Nicodemus, who was a high religious leader, marvel not, believe me, you must be born again. You must be born again. A second birth. A second birth that the Holy Spirit does when you accept Christ into, into your heart. So say this little prayer. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. Save me, Lord. I believe in you. I believe you were born. You died and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart. I accept you. I receive you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. That's all it takes. So thank you for being with us tonight and joining us. And um, if you can give to the ministry, you can go to our website ggcmiami.com and in the right upper right hand corner there is a donate button and whatever God puts on your heart and um, and we thank you for joining us and being part of the ministry and tomorrow evening again 7 o'clock um, right on Facebook and then Saturday um uh, Pastor Keith will be online also on Zoom. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.